Hello and welcome to this episode of Dinner with Dr. Nora. On the menu today is everything you need to know about salt. <clears throat> salt, please. On my table here today, I have some salt. And salt is known as the chemical compound of sodium chloride. And it's a sodium aspect of the compound that can cause all of those health impacts we're gonna talk about very shortly. Now, as humans, we need a bit of sodium in our bodies and that helps us maintain our fluid balance and our volume. And it's thought that we need about one to two grams of salt per day, which is less than half a teaspoon. All right, come with me. I'm gonna show you how much salt is in some of the products that you guys like to eat on your kitchen table. It is recommended that an average adult should have no more than five grams of salt per day, which adds up to being 2,300 milligrams of sodium per day, which is still quite a lot when you come to think about it. An Aussie favorite, Vegemite. Let's take a look. Uh, per 3,300 milligrams. Good day, mate. But unfortunately, the average adult Australian is consuming more than nine grams of salt a day, which is almost double the recommendation. But where are we getting all the salt from and what harm could we be doing to our bodies if we have too much salt? Well, for this part, brace yourself because we can talk about what salt does on the body and how it impacts our health. Table salt. There's iodized table salt. Himalayan pink table salt. Which one do I choose? Studies have shown that if we have too much salt over a prolonged period of time, then it can cause a number of health problems. Now, over here, you can see my trusty heart, which we may remember from previous videos. Now, the problem is if we have too much salt in our diet, it increases our blood pressure, which means that the heart is really straining to push that blood around our body to our vital organs. Now, the problem is if our blood pressure is too elevated for a prolonged period of time, then it starts to affect our organs, such as the kidneys. So we start to get kidney problems. We also start to get heart problems, such as heart disease or heart attacks, even strokes as well. And we know that having too too much salt in our diet can increase our risk of stomach cancer. Now, not only that, but if we have a high salt intake in our diet, then unfortunately it increases the amount of calcium that we excrete in our urine. And so what happens with that is that our bones become more fragile, more brittle, and increases the risk of osteoporosis, meaning that we might get really easy fractures if we were to say fall over. Oh, it's not looking good salt, I have to say. You're not as friendly as I thought you were. Well, Dr. Nora, that sounds pretty gloomy, but how do I know which foods contain high salt and how can I avoid them? Well, it's really important to have a look at the back of your nutritional label of all of your foods. Salt can be found in pretty much all of our foods on the shelves. It's particularly high in processed foods or foods that are ready-made, for example. Let's take a look at McDonald's and see how that fares. Whilst McDonald's has made a great effort to improve the items available on their menu, still a Big Mac medium meal will set you back at least half the daily salt allowance. Not today, Maccas, not today. Wow, that is a lot of salt. We also find salt in high quantities in deli meats, for example. All right, let's check out the deli meat section in Woolies. Let's pick up this shortcut rindless bacon as an example. Let's take a look at the 100 grams. Salt level is 1,080. Guys, we are looking for low salt meals, which will be under 120 milligrams. So this one being 1,080 is a definitely classed as a high salt food try to eat that as little and as frequently as you can. And some cheeses also contain a really high amount of salt. This cheer tasty cheese, let's have a look at the nutritional label. Well, on the back over here, we can see per 100 grams, sodium level is 720 milligrams. Oh my goodness me, that is a definite high salt food product. So if you're gonna have this, have it in moderation. to mention some beautiful sauces that we love having next to our food. For example, take this salsa I've got on my table over here from Coles. If I have a look at the nutritional label on the back, if I look at the average quantity per 100 grams and go down to the sodium, it says 616 milligrams per 100 grams. Now you might be thinking, well, Dr. Nora, how does that equate? Is that a high number? Is that a low number? How should I interpret those results? Well, we know that the average amount of salt that we need to take in per day should be no more than five grams, which is equal to 2,300 milligrams of sodium. So when you're deciding if foods are high in salt or low in salt, when you have a look at the nutritional label, you ideally want to go for foods that per 100 grams should be no more than 120 milligrams of sodium. That is considered as a low salt option. Anything that's over 400 milligrams of sodium would be classified as a high salt food. So those are the foods that you really want to reduce. So unfortunately, this salsa, although it's very tasty, it is also super high in salt, and I'll be minimizing how often I take this food. 
What else do I have on my table? Well, I've got some bread. So bread is very sneaky. There is actually a lot of salt in bread. Again, look at the back of the nutritional label. Let's have a look here. So per 100 grams, it's got 480 milligrams of sodium per 100 grams. Again, this would be classified as a high salt food. It's super important when you are shopping, you have a look for anything that says low in salt or reduced salt. As we can see with this chicken stock, for example. So one is salt reduced and one is the original. Let's take a look at the nutritional labels. 260 versus 415. So this has got less half the amount of salt as this one does, which makes it a healthier option. So by going for those foods that have the labels of reduced salt or no added salt or half the salt, you are definitely doing yourself a favor. However, it is important to note that there is still salt in those products and you still should refer to the nutritional label to make sure that you're consuming as much as you should in your average day. It's also super important to look out for any additives. For example, MSG or monosodium glutamate. This is a flavor additive that is also high in salt. So again, when you're looking at your labels, make sure that it doesn't contain any additives such as MSG. And it's super easy these days to find that on labels because it usually says no added MSG. Wow, Dr. Norris, you've taught me that salt is actually not that good for me. It can increase my blood pressure, it can hurt my heart and it can hurt my kidneys. And you know what? It's found in the most commonest of foods on the shelves. What can I do to further improve my health and to further reduce the amount of salt that I have in my diet? Well, it's not all doom and gloom, guys. Remember, there are some low salt options out there or some reduced salt options, but why not just try and kick the habit altogether? There are some options out there that have got light salt or reduced salt in itself for table salt, and that actually contains a bit of potassium chloride as well as sodium chloride. So it actually has less of sodium inside it, but more potassium, so it reduces the amount of salt that you're inputting into your diet. But if you do want to go cold turkey altogether, well then, good for you. There are some other options you have out there. Why not try some aromatic flavors, some spices, some curry leaves, something else to give you some flavor that reduces the need for you to use any salt? Or why not complement your food with fresh fruit and vegetables, all of the nice things, just to reduce the amount of salt that you're taking in your body. But whatever you do, make sure you're not going in excess of the five grams per day of salt or 2,300 milligrams of sodium per day, because we want to reduce the risk of any heart disease or blood pressure problems or any kidney issues as well. Well, I hope you guys have found this video useful. And of course, if you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to drop me a line in the comment section below. But for now, take care and stay healthy. Ha <laughs> ha!